Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel. I've always been inspired by those crazy low tungsten weight hangers that are mostly sold by Deluxe, but I just didn't want to commit to the complexity of gluing loaded dice wheels. So I set out to see if I could design something that had a similar high weight, low center of gravity that fit in an easier to use and more common wheel set. The results are these next level hangers. Hey everybody, here is an update on my weight hanger concept. If you'll recall, what I wanted to do was see if I could build a front wheel weight hanger that put the center of gravity lower than a deluxe loaded dice weight hanger, but that fit inside a normal 2-2 wheel. And I think I've been able to do that. This is a standard loaded dice wheel, and my concept was to use these square weights that are readily available from Pinewood Derby cars and pack these in instead. And if you get these packed in real tight, what happens is they pack denser, which puts them lower than the cylindrical shape. At least that was my theory, and I will show you the results in a minute here. But you can see that this cylindrical shape has some dead space in between. So the center of gravity on these is basically roughly through the middle of the cylinder, whereas on these squares, it's through the middle of the square. So my thinking was I could get it lower, even though the hanger's not as big a diameter, this weight packs more densely and lower. And we'll see how close I get. So my first version was this uh, plastic hanger and I was able to load weights in several different directions. And I didn't really have a great way to secure the weights. This was really just my first concept. So I just wrapped some Kapton tape around to hold them in. And I didn't fully pack this, but it did in fact fit inside my wheels and it did what I needed it to do. So I took it to the next level. And that next level is this. Freshly 3D printed stainless steel. Straight from the printer. And there are two different sizes. So here's the basic idea. I've got these pockets to load the weights into, kind of like a Pez dispenser. And then you put two of them together and you bolt that onto your wheel. And this does in fact fit inside these Crawler Innovation wheels, which I think are hugely underrated. These are actually my favorite wheels. They are super cheap, super light, and indestructible it's really hard to beat them the downside is you do have to glue your wheels on so you kind of need to have your inserts figured out before you glue them on these weights also fit inside the lovely uh, really beautiful deluxe high clearance 2-2 wheels that just came out so they'll fit inside here now there is a boss eventually that you can see so they won't clear this boss, but you can get them in uh, pretty deep before they hit. So these are symmetrical. So it's basically one part, you put the two together, and they come in, or I should say I made, two different widths. So this is a double row and this is a single row. You can put them together to make two rows or three rows, or if you want to go crazy, four rows. Nice. And these are printed, 3D printed stainless steel, which steel is almost as heavy as brass, but stainless steel is really common for 3D printing. For whatever reason, the powder uh, is really conducive to the laser sintering process and also 
binder jet molding process. So you can get really nice stainless steel parts that are heavy, that are accurate, and look great. You can also get aluminum and titanium, although aluminum is substantially less strong when it's 3D printed. Stainless is kind of the go-to. Titanium is half the weight of stainless, which isn't a factor in this application, but it's much lighter and it's probably four times the cost of stainless steel. Now I need to do some quick calculations here. Uh, this is the hanger I was using, just to kind of test things out. My total vehicle weight is 2,180 grams. And that's with a 58-42 weight balance. I really like 63 or 64% in the front, so I need to add a bunch more weight to the front than, than I had loaded into these. Now, a really quick way to kind of get you in the ballpark for your weight is to figure out what 1% of your weight is. So 1% of 2180 is about 22 grams. So each percentage point that I wanna raise my weight in the front needs about 22 grams. So to get up to 64%, I need about 130 grams additional. That's 65 on each weight hanger. And my current weight hanger is 50 grams. So I need 50 grams plus another 65 grams. That's gonna put me around 115. Um, I'm gonna round up because as your rig gets heavier, the percent, the one percent of your weight goes up as well. So I'm going to round up generously. I'm going to put these about 115 as a target. Probably 130-ish is going to be my target weight. Now that's probably going to be, based on my calculations, three rows. So I'm going to use the three-row setup. nice and easy well maybe not See what this weighs. 135. Dang. Perfect. Now I did leave room for a little bit of extra. Um, if you've bought cylindrical, if you've bought cylindrical uh, weights before, you probably have some of these thinner ones. And so I left some room for a couple more. I'm just going to put them all in for this first test. All, all in and see what happens. All right, so see that? Got some cylindrical ones in there. Now I'm going to put these together. Boom. Nice. Now they rattle just a little bit. So I will probably go back at some point and put in some of this tungsten putty just to kind of fill in some of the cracks and to keep it from rattling. I don't know if this is gonna bother me or not, but you do have the option to lock them in with some tungsten putty. Let's see how much this weighs now. 152, that's heavy. So I'll build the second one and I'll be in business. Before I was using deluxe super heavy brass portal covers and a brass knuckle and I scraped out 
I dremeled out a little extra clearance for steering. And these two items weigh 217 roughly. Um, but you can see the center of gravity of this whole assembly is probably up here in this area, if I had to guess. And my tungsten weight hangers are going to put all the weight down here as low as possible. I swapped both of these brass pieces out for uh, aluminum versions. Let's take a look at the center of gravity of these various configurations. This hanger is designed to mount to the deluxe Capra portal covers that have their integrated proprietary hanger mounts. Maybe in the future I'll design one for the standard Capra 4-bolt mounting pattern. The CG I'm talking about is going to be measured relative to these mounting holes. Deluxe makes three versions. Here is the plastic one. Now, I didn't go to the effort to model it exactly, so the weight is not super accurate, but close enough for this. There's the aluminum version and the brass version. Notice how the CG actually gets higher, meaning a lower number, as the total weight goes up. That's because you have more and more heavy brass at the top, and in the plastic one, you just have plastic up here. So, as you switch to heavier materials, the CG actually creeps up a little bit. If you look closely, you'll see that this really heavy one, 180 grams, has a center of gravity that's 15 millimeters below those two mounting points. That's better than any of the deluxe ones and even better than their best one, the plastic. So you get more weight at a lower center of gravity and you don't have the headache of a loaded dice wheel. Now, I mean no disrespect whatsoever to Deluxe. I love those guys, I know those guys, and they do amazing, amazing work. This was just a side project that I worked on and it turned out pretty cool. For my version, the weights of the three options, two rows, three rows, four rows, are actually pretty close to Deluxe. You'll notice that this center of gravity gets lower and lower as you go to the heavier options. That's because there's a minimal amount of steel, of material, up here at the bosses. And all the added weight gets added down here at the bottom. I actually end up using the four rows on my car. Like I said, that 1% calculation was just rough and it changes as you add weight, so I underestimated and I went back and got this overall balance. I'm very happy with the forward weight bias, almost 64%. My left, right, and cross weight numbers are about as good as it gets, and it's still under five and a half pounds, which is terrific considering I have aluminum axles and rear steering. And my first Capra was way over eight pounds, so this is awesome. So was all this worth it just for a slightly lower center of gravity? The total knuckle hanger weight overall didn't change that much, but the location of that weight is a few millimeters lower with my new hangers. Let's see if that translates on the trail. This is a spot out front of my house and it's one of my good uh, practice spots and tuning locations. I keep it marked with rocks so I always know the same location. I generally can never get up this if I hit it straight on. This footage is from quite a while ago, so the car is not exactly the same as it was today, but I've driven this so many times, I've got a pretty good idea how it feels. Usually the only way I can get up this is if I hit it at an angle. Reach up with that front left wheel. That itself is a good um, demonstration in driving technique. That's generally the only way I can get up this slowly is at an angle. So here it is with this new weight hanger with four rows of tungsten. Wow, right up at first time. And the second time. 
Now I'm going to try a little experiment. I'm going to disconnect the negative spring or the hairband and push the shocks completely topped out so the center of gravity is a little bit lifted. Now I have most of my components mounted to the front axle so the unsprung weight really isn't that heavy. Basically just the bodywork, the skid, the transmission and the motor are the only things sitting on the unsprung weight. And I've just lifted that up to where the shocks are fully extended and you can see that small change in center of gravity, that small lift of the center of gravity. The car is now unable to get over that edge. Not going to happen. So I'll reconnect the negative spring to hold the front end down. Shocks are held fully compressed. And it goes right up. I'm happy with the results. I've improved my ability to climb. One of the best ways to improve your vertical performance is to move weight lower. Forget about link risers, they don't do anything. You cannot push your front end down with linkage geometry. Look at your weight location and embrace negative springs. So what's the next, next level? How about a loaded dice wheel with that open bead area, but use these cubic tungsten blocks instead of the cylindrical ones. That would put the weight even lower. Also, I have it on good authority that Deluxe may be working on a beadlock loaded dice wheel that doesn't require the complicated gluing. That would be next, next, next level. Oh, oh.